looking for trouble. Okay, welcome back, folks. Of course, Patrick uh, is still on the way. He's still on the road. But I'm wondering if he will call in to talk or anything. As I said, or okay, let me just address something that Bian said earlier. Um, Bian, you were talking about, um, you said anything basically that, that gets to you about uh, things you're having trouble with uh, in society or in terms of politics or you know anything that's troubling you. And you were talking about electricity increasing by 50%. And then you also mentioned that... Uh, uh, well, one of the things, particular things that you mentioned about it was w- that was getting your goat was that you wish that the Senate would stop blocking the franchise of power plants, uh, and because of the uh, the franchise of power plants in terms of coal and clean air, and that you were st- you were actually um, you actually mentioned the practicality of solar panels and looking into it because it's still a young um, how do you say this technology it hasn't been developed completely and it actually takes a lot of investment um, in order to actually really really utilize solar energy in order uh, for us to live the way we're used to living and to you know to power up everything the way we've done in the past Uh, and you're saying that we also have some sources of coal that are sustainable within our own country we don't have to import it but I, I, you know, perhaps, uh, like, what I like about what you said, Bian, is that you have a suggestion and a definite way of going about things. And you're also citing the practicality of things. Perhaps there's a solution, a middle ground to it. Because I, th- I do think, though, Bian, that the wave of the future, in order for us to, to survive, to be able to survive, is to take better care of our environment and the clean air. But you did bring up a good point in saying, well, if your electricity bill, go- electricity bill goes up 50%, are we going to, I mean, how are you going to deal with that? We won't be able to survive in the short term. And also, I know we mine coal in this country, uh, but uh, to, to be honest, the coal mines that, I've, that I know about, I don't know that a whole lot about them, but our coal is not, the grade is not high enough to be considered uh, um, coal that, that, uh, that doesn't pollute the air so much. Um, I know that because I spoke to some people in mine before and who were interested in trading. Uh, you know, you know, I just meet a lot of people, get to talk to them, who are in the business of trading coal and shipping coal back and forth. So uh, as of now, we do actually import coal it, for, from Indonesia and other places. Uh, so maybe that's where the problems are coming in. But I really like the fact that you you don't just complain about the electric bill going up and you're looking at solutions also and citing the practicality like this is what we have to do we have to look at the problem and attack it both ways i mean we can't we won't possibly be able to afford a higher rate of electricity and it'll take a while for us to develop solar energy so what do we do in the meantime well this is probably where the government should come in and subsidize some things and you know speaking of subsidies and budget and all that uh let me just go to some of of the texts um actually i wanted to wait for patrick to get here but uh let's see because there are a whole bunch of them um for example here's one wait let me just get to it uh hold on hold on hold okay uh there's text here uh, uh talking about um you know, not having money and saving. It says here, the palace urges us to tighten our belts. And actually, I saw this in the newspaper. It was probably a week ago. It was, it was a mini headline. Due to runaway increases in oil prices, tapos meron silang malaking budget at 600 million intel fund. Gago. Okay, I didn't say that gago. Ha? That's from the texter. Okay, so there, I read that out. Um, you know, like, it's, it's about... What I want to actually say, Bian, is that we, uh, I'm glad that there are people like you out there who are thinking, and I wish there were more people actually serving in government who would try to come to solutions instead of just fighting, um, having media sound bites out to attack one party or another uh, for the sake of politics or to, you know, to have their names out there all the time so that they can run again for the Senate or whatever position they want to run for in 2013. Okay. Listen, that's not too far away. I wanted to take up the issues actually of of the budget and where the money is going and what the what happens in terms of underspending to the economy and where the heck all this money is going. If we're saving so much money, then why are we in so much pain? Don't tell me you can't feel it. I know you can feel it. Um, as Patrick and I said the last time, 
uh, when we had this crisis with the prices of oil uh, and it was a very it was actually a world crisis they were the last administration was able to deal with it and they removed the VAT uh, on on the the price of oil and an excise tax just to help the people at the time that was a very unpopular move especially with the oil companies but it had to be done and the president then the leader then did it so what's happening now you can't just always say well sorry it's market forces anyway okay let me try to get some of the text because they're oh they're a bit jumbled now okay um here's a text on uh here uh i'm okay i'm uh, this according to this text uh, next okay senators have roasted the aquino economic team over government underspending uh uh, this, the, Senate, the Senate came under fire over its fixation on reducing the budget deficit at the expense of public spending and economic growth, led by Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima. The team was put on the defensive at the Senate budget hearing over the, showdown, uh, sorry, over the slowdown in the economy in the last quarter. The quarter's 3.4% growth rate missed the government's target and was partly blamed on Malacanang's cautious approach to spending, especially on infrastructure. And, you know, when you talk about infrastructure, it's really also about developing the countryside. And perhaps, you know, power plants, um, like the ones you were referring to, Bien, but uh, maybe if not coal, then, you know, spend it on something, some investment that we can reap the rewards for in the future. But also to go back to Mrs. Mercado's point, we should do things the, in the correct manner. We hope to find that right balance. Okay, let me try to get to a couple more of the texts here. Um, okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um... Let me see. Hold on. I'm trying to pick the right text that goes along with this. Okay. It's a pity that more and more people are missing uh, PGMA's governance style, where every day is an, uh, are missing PGMA's governance style, uh, where every day is an emergency mode day. Where agencies and clusters, oh, so they're missing the P, PGMA style because today, uh, these days, every, every day is an emergency mode day. Where agencies and clusters are frequently summoned to respond swiftly and adopt. Ah, no, 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 no. Uh, her style of governing was every day was like an emergency. She dealt with it. Where agencies and clusters are frequently summoned to respond swiftly and adopt measures to alleviate day-to-day problems confronting the nation. Solutions were quick and implementation instant. And I guess uh, this texter feels that we're not getting that from the administration now.